This is Spencer Colgan and welcome to my wallpaper construction channel. I just want to give you a quick tip on this really good tool. This is a 3M hand masker. And somebody came up with this awesome tool and not a lot of painters use it, but I see it on a lot of jobs, enough of them do. This retails, I paid $50 for the last one that I purchased, but the two previous ones before that, I paid 62 to 65 bucks, which kills me because I don't think it's worth that. But it just kills me. My last one I bought at Sherwin Williams, and he, he made a deal with me. So he charged me $50, brand new. And it came with a nice roll of blue tape and uh, plastic. Now, this has a blade on it. See that blade? And what that does is simply cut the paper off as you pull it. Now, why do we use this? Well, for the video purposes, I used the, the paper on this. Usually what you'll just use on this application is one and a half inch tape, and it does the trick. Why? Well, I, want to, I like perfectly straight lines. I don't like crooked lines, and I don't, I don't like painters who say, oh, come on, you can, just, you can just freehand it. That's what they do on commercial projects where they're moving quickly and everything is production, production. But I tell you, even though it looks good, it's not perfect. So we don't freehand anything at wallpaper, at my wallpaper construction company. Well, what I want from my painters is, now look, nothing's perfect, but we call this perfect, okay? Because it looks perfect. It looks perfect. And so what do I want? I want a perfectly straight line. And the only way to get that, tape is straight. It's already a, it's a piece of paper that runs, each edge is parallel to each other. And so when you put that up against an edge, you're going to create what appears to be a perfectly straight line. You know what I'm saying. But for those of you who might say in the, uh, the comment section, you know, some silliness about perfection, this is as close to perfection as you're going to get. Freehand nothing unless you're in an area where you can't get a piece of tape. And this, this makes the customer very happy. Plus, this will last for years. This will be reflecting on your work for years. And so now, you saw the trick on the last video regarding this. I put a little piece, I put a little bead of clear caulking in this. This way, you seal all of the tape so that if there's any little breaches, you know how tape doesn't fit perfectly on a surface because it's not perfectly flat. Although you think it is, you put tape down and then you pull it up and you see a bunch of, uh, a bunch of the material, the paint underneath the tape. Well, this prevents it. This technique here, by putting the clear caulking on it. Why do we use clear? I explained it in the last video that you want to use clear caulking because when you remove your tape, there's going to be a point at which the tape edge meets the paint that you're applying. And what you want to do is, because that material, now just follow me, this tape, the edge of it is going to be right up against your paint. So when you pull it away, if you used colored caulking, you're not going to be able to get the paint there so if caulking is there, it's going to be the color of the caulking. So you want it to be clear so that when you remove the tape, the clear caulking bears the color of whatever paint you're using because it becomes translucent. Okay, now that we got that done, don't use white. You'll see white. Trust me when I tell you. Okay, so why don't we try, try, this, try this technique out, okay? So I, well, I'm not a right-handed person. So I will use my, but I will use my right hand for you. How's that? Because I like you so much. All right. And I, I appreciate the comments you folks are leaving on the videos. Um, they're very good for other uh, people who watch my channel, who uh, are edified by the information that you bring up that I don't think of to put into the video, which is very good. So now you don't have to be super careful with the way I said yesterday, you go in one direction, because this paint has dried overnight. 
and so we can go. We can. I like going in two directions only in this case because it's getting the paint in all those little crevices. All right. While I have you here, why don't we talk about something more important, huh? I'm only kidding. What's more important than painting? You get to join me and hear all of my stories. Now, why did I put a, 90, a 45 here? Why did I do that? See that? Why did I, well, it's almost a 45. But why would I do that? Think about if I just brought the paper up to this corner and this, this paper here were right there. What do you think would happen? Now, all you painters know, you know what would happen. You would have a non-taped piece of paper in the way, right here. So in order to get it out of the way so I can get tape there, I'm not gonna tear it, it takes too much time, just make it a 45 degree angle. This way you can get a new sheet of paper in there, right? The 45 gets the paper out of your way where you don't want it. That's why I do that. <clears throat> so let's see how I did. <clears throat> I'm putting a real good amount of paint here. Okay, now I will finish it off for you in one direction. Watch this. I'm putting a, <coughs> a lot of paint. One direction when you're painting with a brush eliminates the pulling off of the paint that you just applied. When you go, when you go back and forth with a, with a brush, immediately when you stop the, the brush in one direction and go in the other, when you go in the other direction, the paint you applied this way gets pulled off when you go that way, right at the point at which the direction changes. And you'll see that up along the top of your walls where uh, rush painters p paint your walls. Go in your house and look up at the top where your wall meets your ceiling. And when you see every 24 inches or so a color differential, you'll see that it's caused by the brush and the changing of the direction. That's what happens. Now, if your painter took the time to give you a very professional finish and gave you two coats, you won't see that. Here's how you would paint that. Let me just tell you. Even if you go back and forth like this, here's what you do. Let's say I'm painting back and forth all the way down to here, right? And I still have all that way to go down there where you're looking. Here's what you would do. Assume that this is not painted here. You go from the non-painted edge toward what was already painted just like this. You don't pull paint that's already been applied. After 30 seconds to 60 seconds, your paint is setting. Once you disrupt it with the brush, you change the texture of the paint. I know it gets technical, but that's what happens. If you're a perfectionist, that's how you have to paint. So what you do is you go from the non-painted edge down here because you're not disrupting anything. It's not painted. And you just, that makes it nice and uniform. You could do that. That's not going to disrupt it. The difference of, of back and forth and all of this nonsense, back and forth, that's what's disrupting your paint. But you could simply go from the non-painted edge toward what was painted every time you get every three or four feet. You just take the brush and you, you hold it nice and flat and it puts a beautiful uniform color. The whole thing with painting is to make everything look uniform. If you do this a lot and you, you wanna go, ideally, everything is painted with the same applicator in the same direction. Follow that rule and you'll never fail. That's an impossible rule. But ideally, everything you paint should be painted with the same applicator in the same exact direction. Since that's not possible, 
you want to eliminate the effects for having had to paint with different applicators in different directions. And the way to do that is to use your roller as close to your ceiling as possible, going horizontal, close to the ceiling, but within a quarter of an inch. And my friend Billy Devlin from Ireland will agree with this. And he knows exactly what I'm talking about. So of course you can't get your roller up against the ceiling because you're going to get paint on your ceiling. But you go as close as you can. Okay? And you would take your brush. That's how you cut in against the ceiling. But then you get your roller as close to that ceiling as possible. Going over what you brushed. And you do it while it's wet so that everything dries at the same time. Everything is rolled in the same direction, brushed in the same direction, and that's what will give you a uniform finish, okay? That's a good tip that you got. I didn't anticipate doing that for you on this video, but here's now what we're going to do. We're going to peel this off and see how we did with this. Now, you see why we have the masking tape? You see how I can go fast here and get paint on, on this paper? It's blocking it. This is 